There we go. Welcome to Bucket List Coach Web Show Live. month, November, is National Gratitude Month. I want to give you a shout out to my friend Cindy Lee who brought this to our attention. So thank you, Cindy. National Gratitude Month in November encourages us to embrace the power of gratitude. Gratitude is more than simply saying thank you. Gratitude's an amazing power having the ability to shift from focusing on the negative to appreciating what is positive in our lives. Practicing daily gratitude gives us a deeper connection to ourselves and the world around us and to our creator. If everyone practiced daily gratitude, we could change ourselves and the planet for the better. Everyone would be happier, love and love would grow. The world would know true peace. What are we waiting for? Give gratitude a try. You'll be happy that you did. Wow, that is amazing. Thank mm-hmm. you, thank you, thank you so much to the mayor of Huntington Beach for the National Gratitude Month proclamation. Great job, Cindy. Hey, folks, welcome to the Bucket List Coach Web Show Live. My name is Robin Stern, and I'm going to be your host for as long as it takes for our good friend Cindy to get her act together and get back here and take over this show again. So you're stuck with me, guys. But I just want to say that I am your Google guru. I help you with Google, and I make all things Google work. I'm also the executive director of B better, not bitter. And since we have, you know, this national giving thing going on this month, we decided that maybe I should throw that out there as well. But uh, I really want to tell you that for the next few weeks, I'm going to probably be the host of this uh, Bucket List Coach web show live as I'm filling in for Cindy, whose shoes I'm not worthy to tie. However, I am humbled and honored that she would choose me to serve her audience, you folks. So thank you very much for having me. And please, please stick around. If her numbers drop, she's going to ax me in a second. All right. So this, this month, the uh, show is all about celebrating Aviation History Month. How cool is that? I, I'm a Marine. I worked on uh, helicopters. So this is all about me as well. It's also the Marine Corps birthday and Veterans Day this month as well. So um, we have Gratitude Month on the 27th. We celebrate the National Day of Giving. Uh, big shout out to National Day Calendar, who we have a uh, representative here with us today. Uh, bucket, List Coach is tra- bucket List Coach Travel is hosting the first annual cruise based on national days to Mexico Riviera Cruise, April 22nd through the 29th, 2023. Mark your calendars, folks. This is going to be a do not miss cruise. We're going to celebrate National Prime Rib Day, International Pay It Forward Day, Guitar Month and Brunch Month, and for Volunteer Month, volunteering in an orphanage in Puerto Vallarta. How much cooler could that be? Check out Mexico Bucket List Cruise. Dot com. That's MexicoBucketListCruise.com. And also a very special announcement as soon as the National Day calendar will be announcing that Cindy has her very own National Day. That's some pretty cool stuff. So uh, today is uh, we have a guest with us from National Day calendar, Chris Vandeventer. He is the man. Chris, I really appreciate you coming in today and helping out and and bringing the story about National Day Calendar. But tell our audience a little bit about the National Day Calendar. Like, how'd you get started with it? How important it is that we have this kind of place to go and uh, all be on the same page about the National Gratitude Month, Aviation History Month, and then the Day of Giving. And then maybe you can uh, end us up with a little bit of aviation trivia, because I understand you may have a connection to that as well. Chris. Yeah. So... International Day Calendar, we've been around since um, 2013. Um, actually, our next this January uh, 19th is our 10th anniversary. Yes. And it really started out to be a sort of a, a hobby project by our founder. He wanted to know about popcorn and National Popcorn Day. So he started a blog, and then it just ballooned from there to the point where we were like, you know what, we need to turn this into a business or shut the blog down. So we turned it into a business. And we are basically the go-to source for, as I like to say, fun, unique, and absurd national days. 
Well, um, I appreciate your calendar because my social media person uses it, you know, almost religiously to make sure that if she doesn't have content from me, she has something that she can post content wise. Mm -hmm. So thank you again, sir. You guys really do make a difference with that. Yeah, it's a great place. I've been with the company a little over a year now, and um, I'm in charge of their uh, burgeoning radio um, venture, National Day Radio, where we're trying to take what we do on the calendar, where we talk about the days and some of the history, and then find songs that kind of match the mood of the day. Oh. Or, um, so some of the days are easier um, than others, but um, it's fun to kind of find those songs and and on the radio, just give a little bit of a history about what days are, you know, and what they mean and where they came about. Awesome. Is there a National Beatles Day? Because I know which song you could play on National Beatles Day. You know, I think there is. I can't remember the date of it, though. <laughs> I bet you Cindy will pop it in the chat for us if we ask nicely. But uh, OK, so look, how important is it that we have these days? Right. I mean, like uh, specifically, we have these days this this month where it's uh, Aviation History Month and National Gratitude Month. So um, give me a little bit of like the National Gratitude Month. Like, have you had any really great stories about that? Have you have you seen any great things? I know I've got a couple and I, I want to share too, but I was told that you're the guest today, so I'm supposed to keep my mouth shut and let you talk. <laughs> you know, Gratitude Month, We it was founded back in 2015 by a woman named Stacy Gruel, and she has uh, GratefulPlanet.com. And it's just, it was a way to kind of express what we what people mean to us and you know we don't do that enough we need to let other folks know what um that we care that we're engaged that we want to see them do well and our motto is celebrate every day and that's what these calendar days are about it's it, whether you like food or whether it's a, a cause or you, you have a profession um that is underappreciated these days give somebody something a reason to celebrate and a reason to be engaging uh, what's one thing we've noticed on social media with all the hashtags we've developed for these days just the amount of connections that people are making online, right. uh, talking about whatever it is and we think gratitude month is a great um way to go into this uh the giving season you know we have thanksgiving coming up we have christmas hanukkah kwanzaa so there's all sorts of reasons why to, to celebrate coming up and being thankful for what we have. Absolutely. Yeah. And I guess the whole celebration thing, you mentioned Hanukkah and I was just thinking how far back that tradition goes. So, mm -hmm. you know, it's an awesome, awesome thing to put down and let people know. And by the way, National Beatles Day is June 25th next year. So uh, that'll be that'll be a day where you won't have any problem picking a song for that day. Right? I'll mark it down. Yeah. Thank you. Thank you. Make sure we have a good one there. Um, I, if I knew somebody whose birthday it was on that day, I'd make you play the Beatles birthday song. Right. Yeah. So that's but right. Robin, you know, I, I'll do that only if you hold my hand. I will. I, I will hold your hand, 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 hand. Oh, that's the octopus <laughs> version. Sorry, sorry, sorry. All right, cool. So anyway, hey, Chris, um, the aviation thing, like you have some aviation history and aviation connections. So uh, I know this is National Aviation Month and that makes Cindy just she kind of loses her mind. Absolutely. She is such a freaking fly girl. I did a live with her uh, a few months back and I was at our local airport and they have an F-14 just kind of gutted out there as a model mm -hmm. on the runway. And I walked all around it and under it. And she was just freaking. I mean, the whole time she was like, ah, like fangirling because I was walking around this F-14. But uh, I got to say that, uh, that the aviation connection and with Cindy, that is, this is really heartbreaking that she's not able to host the show this month because she is right. definitely uh, stuck with that. So talk to us a little bit about Aviation History Month. You know, it, this is one of those days where, you know, when we started the blog, it's sort of like, there was no one place to go to find out what started it all. And for a lot of them, we're still trying to figure that out. Aviation History is one, Month is one of those that we don't know where it got started. So wait, let me, you guys actually do some research and go and look and see if you can give us the roots and check. So this isn't, Absolutely. Just, this isn't just, you know, somebody decided let's pull this day out of the hat. You're actually going back and researching and, and documenting, you know, when did these things start so that we have some legitimate in, information then. Absolutely. One of the more obscure days we have is bittersweet chocolate with almonds day. And apparently that's been around since the late 1800s based on a recipe appearing in a cookbook. Nice. And so that's what we want to do is it's a, we, you know, these days were here before us. We're not the ones that created all these days, though we do partner with folks who want to 
add new ones to the calendar. We add about 25 a year. And um, yeah, it's it's about the history because, you know, you want to, I guess one thing I would say is some people would say, well, why are we celebrating National Pizza Day? That's not important. Memorial Day is important. Fourth of July is important, important. And it's like, yes, but these other days exist as well. And right. just because they exist does not take away from the significance of anything else. They all run hand in hand, and we just want to make sure that people can celebrate any way they want. Perfect. And this gives us one central location to go and get mm -hmm. all that data together. And so we're all, again, on the same page, celebrating uh, uh, similar uh, things and, and uh, not just not just the big ones, but all the little details, which I like the one that's up there. National Deviled Egg Day also happens to be on National Stress Awareness Day. I don't know if that's a connection or, or if there's anything uh, that may be causing that, but uh, I like the fact that we can go and check that out at your website. It's, it's mm -hmm. really awesome uh, as a resource. And like I said, my social media person is always using it to make sure that <laughs> Cindy with the November 8th is what she said. December 8th is National Brownie Day. Leave it up to Cindy. I expect a brownie on December 8th then, Cindy, okay? <laughs> if that's the way you're going to be about it and, and uh, making us hungry while we're trying to do a show here. You know, we're trying to do a show here, right, Cindy? Yeah. <laughs> you right. know, I uh, one of my coworkers, they made a comment today. It's that it's deviled eggs day. It's like, why is a two egg omelet filling, but I need to eat six deviled eggs to fill anything? <laughs> wow. See, now I always wondered that. Why is that even a thing? How does that, how does that work? Yeah. It's so, like, it, it, they, they, do they lose calories when they change form? I don't know. And you know, here's another item that works with, I, my wife and I couldn't eat a whole average size zucchini if we chopped it up and or grilled it or put it in a pan with some onions and we couldn't eat the whole thing, but I can take two huge zucchinis and grind them up into zoodles put some red sauce on those suckers and we'll eat the whole pan. It's like, yeah. how did we just eat those two entire zucchinis in one sitting? So anyway, uh, <laughs> uh, I, I'm being told and prompted that we're probably time for us to move on to a little bit of aviation trivia. So uh, yeah. I, I was told you're the man for that. So I'm kind of out of my league here. I'll try my best to keep up, but give us some aviation trivia, Chris. Yeah. yeah well, my dad was air force. He never flew, but um he did treat a lot of pilots, but I went to the FAA website, surprisingly, and I got some fun, fun quizzes here. Um, and some of them are pretty easy and some might not. So this I'll is just me kinda... frantically Googling the, a a the FAA. <laughs> so here we'll, uh, we'll, we'll quiz you and um, we'll start with an easy one. Uh, who piloted the first solo flight across the Atlantic? I don't know if, oh, across the Atlantic. Mm, that was, was that Lindbergh? Ding, ding, ding. Yes, you're right. Oh, look at that. I got one. Okay. And then uh, what was the name of his plane? Oh, the, uh, yeah, that's a big deal. And I can't remember it. Uh, the something, it was two words. I don't remember. Was it two words? It's four. Oh, five, nope. actually. Spirit five. of St. Louis. Spirit of St. Louis. I was like, Lucky Lindy kept going through my head. Sorry. Okay. And then um, we're going to throw a big curveball here for you. Uh, who was the first air traffic controller? Oh, I don't know, but he was bald very shortly after he started, right? I understand yeah. that's, they need National Stress Awareness Day. <laughs> yeah, that's right. Um, his name was Archie League. Archie League, like baseball league or football league? Ba yeah, okay, spelled cool. that way, yeah. Archie League, there's some okay. useless trivia. Yeah, so um, we're going to go military question here. Which of the following is a military aircraft? The A300, the Boeing 727, or the F-17? The F-17, that was too easy. Way okay. too easy. Yeah. Way too easy. Okay, um, let's see. What aircraft is known as the Hercules? Oh, that's it, the... Uh, the uh, is it? Uh, well, I won't even give you Are the you going to give me options? I was going to give you options, but why don't, you, why don't you tell me what you think it is before I, I give you I believe it's the C-130, but it could be the C-5A, but I think that's the Galaxy, not the Hercules. Well, you are correct. The C-5 is the Galaxy, and the C-130 is the Hercules. Yes! All right. Now, and I, I tell I, you, I'm holding my own here, folks. And I tell you, you haven't lived until you've flown in a parachute seat on a C-130 all the way to Korea. That's... Oh, um, Thank God I've never had to do that. And I'm sorry if you did, sir. Military space, a travel. It's the way to go. Oh, boy. <laughs> okay. So next one. Um, what does supersonic mean? Super faster than Faster than sound, really loud, or faster than the speed of light? It would have to be sound because sonic is sound, right? That's right. Right, right, right. Okay. okay uh, Cindy threw a question at us here. What airport is the largest in the USA, in the U.S.? So there's well, largest or busiest, right? So yeah, those are two different. 
for me, it's a, it's a toss up between LAX and JFK. For largest, I'm not sure. Cindy, did you look that up? And do you know which is the busiest? Atlanta's the largest. No, they're the busiest, Cindy. I don't think they're the largest. I think they're just the busiest. We have more takeoffs and landings and more uh, more passenger numbers through the terminal. But I don't know if that makes it. Does that make us the largest or just the busiest? I don't know. We'll have to figure however, it out. However more. you want to say it, yeah. We're bringing that question back around. All right, Chris? Okay. All right. What kind of aircraft has a motor but no wings? Uh, 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 aircraft with a motor but no wings. It's got to be a... A, uh, a, a rocket? A glider or a blimp? A rocket. No, it has wings. A blimp. Correct. Okay. There we go. There okay. we go. Got me. Got me. Okay. Which aircraft has wings but no motor? A glider. You got that. Uh, that's one. right. Yeah, you got that one. one. Okay. Okay. And let's see. Uh, who invented the kite? Which which nationality? Which country invented the kite? Uh, it's got to be the Chinese. Well, yeah, your choices are Chinese, Japanese, or the Russians. It's got to be the Chinese. Uh, the answer there is the Japanese. No, oh, hold on. No, 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 wait. Nope. I'm reading the wrong key. Yeah, it is the Chinese. Yes, they invented oh. the kite. <laughs> yep. I was reading the you know wrong what? question. I got it wrong. I got it right. <laughs> That's right. Okay, now who invented the rocket? The rocket. Oh, 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 oh. Same that three choices. Was, that was the Chinese too, right? Didn't they do it with fireworks? Absolutely. All right. There we go. There we go. That's right. Okay, that's all I had for. That's all we got. Questions. Okay, yeah. well, that's fine because the rest of them are the rest of them are, here. The rest of them are far too easy. Oh, okay. Well, we don't want the far too easy ones. Um, I, Cindy said something about was the largest, the busiest. Did she say something else? Um, nope. She said Atlanta is the busiest. That's what we got from the Facebook user. Mm -hmm. Atlanta is the busiest, and Cindy, I think it's Atlanta. So, all right. So maybe Atlanta is the biggest, but okay. or the largest. I do know that we've been fighting with like Dubai or something is the most passenger counts uh we fight back and forth with that so uh, yeah go I ahead have, Chris. i have two more yeah we'll throw these ones out there um let's see the first free flight of a human happened in 19 in 1783 in a hot air balloon where did that occur what city you're offering me options because there's a lot of cities <laughs> well your choices are london new york or paris i want to say paris and you would be correct. Yes, that was a guess. That's great, okay. man. <laughs> okay, and this one here, it's a this is a famous aircraft, but it had a famous name, but I'm not going to give you the name or okay. who built it. The H4 Hercules made one flight in 1947. What was the name of that aircraft? Oh, it was uh is that the one that carried one of the bombs? Um uh don't keep, in mind, keep in mind 1947, so it was after World War II. Okay, okay, yeah, yeah, yeah. Mm. Um, it was built by Howard Hughes. It was the something had a weird bird name. Yeah, it was his Spruce Goose. His Spruce all wood Goose. plane. All wood, and that was it. Yeah, yeah, that's right. And I think it flew like for three minutes. Yeah, well, and, and then, then, then it was turned to the matchsticks. That's right. <laughs> so that wraps up my aviation history. You're welcome. Okay, so I'll throw a couple of uh, I'll throw a couple of F fourteen Tomcat facts out because Cindy's an F fourteen freak. So can you tell me the day of the first flight of the F fourteen? Oh, jeez. Yeah, right. Do so you realize it was almost forty five years ago on December twenty first, nineteen seventy? Seventy. Wow. Nineteen seventy was that's the first that's flight. All, that's almost fifty years ago. Yeah, yeah. Well, I guess I'm looking at an older website then. Um, so here, here's just a, a fact: the F-14 was the largest and heaviest U.S. fighter to ever take off of an aircraft carrier. That's, that's interesting. A pretty big deal. Yep, yep, yep. Even even when they stripped down the B-29s in World War II. I guess so. Okay. I'm reading it from from a, from a reputable. It's on the internet. It has to be right, Chris. That's right. Uh, it's the truth. It's on the internet. <laughs> so. Um, that, that's that's a inane one. So uh, let's see. The F-14 was the only launch platform for the AIMG-54 Phoenix missile, and it could carry up to six of the 1,000-pound missiles at a time. Wow. That, that's good stuff. Okay, so um, the F-14 has one of the most powerful radars available at the time. It could track 24 targets simultaneously. 
that's pretty sweet. If you've mm -hmm. ever seen any of those tracking systems and the way that they're, oh, they're yeah. locking on, it uh, to be able to, it'll have a square around every one of your bad guys on your screen, and you just pick which one you want and launch your rocket and then go on to the next. But that's in a, that's a pretty incredible number there. So it served as the Navy's maritime air superiority fighter, fleet defense interceptor, and aerial reconnaissance platform. Three different roles for one jet. That's a pretty flexible jet. I got to mm -hmm. say, that's uh, uh, that's more flexible than a pull. Um, never mind. Sorry. The only country currently operating the F-14 is who? Come on, Chris. There's only one country still using it. Well, it has to be one of our allies. I got that right. That's true. That's true. Well, I know it's not Japan because they fly the F-4. All right. Uh, All right, right. Um, Saudi Arabia. Got to get the page back up here. It's, no, either it's not an ally. I'm sorry. It's not an ally anymore. Oh, really? Iran. Iran. Oh, okay. Only country still. Flying. That was that was my that was my other guess. That was your next guess. Okay, okay. Uh, the F-14s were exported to Iran in 1976 when the U.S. had a positive diplomatic relations with the country, so it was an ally at the time. There you go. Okay. Okay. So the F-14 wings can be overswept to 75 degrees to stay, save space. So they show a picture that they could actually move the wings back, right? And fold mm -hmm. them down along the fuselage. It was for supersonic flight, but it also saved a lot of space on the aircraft carrier. Absolutely. Uh, yeah, yeah, there you go. Um, let's see. Oh, here's a really cool one. So the fact that they could do that with the wings uh, it was a pretty great task and you know, pretty cool technology. But did you know that during the testing of the plane before they actually, you know, brought it out for full production, they landed an F-14 on an aircraft carrier with one wing swept back and one wing fully extended. Hmm. Now, that must have been a seriously good pilot. I mean, you got to yeah. be kidding me. They, I guess they had a jam or something locked up, but they landed that sucker with one out and one in. So, I mean, that's pretty, that's pretty sweet. But, um, so the, the, the spoilers on the wings are for low speeds and then they have different tailorons, not ailerons, uh, differential tailorons for their high speed mm -hmm. uh, flight. Um, and let's see, we'll get one more. The last F-14 combat mission was flown in 2006, but the combat, the Tomcat is still one of the most unique, impressive, and fastest military aircraft ever built. So there you go, folks. 2006 was a turning point from the big war horse size, super fast, to the uh, more uh, sleek, more technology driven, you know, the F-35 and stuff now. that mm -hmm. uh, you know, We were talking about this. I worked on Huey and Cobra helicopters in the Marine Corps, and we were talking about the new copters and how the, the Hueys and Cobras were like the Ford pickup truck and the new helicopters are like the Teslas. But it wasn't a, 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 a smack at the Hueys and Cobras. What he was saying was we could go out simultaneously with the Apache guys or the Black Hawk guys, and we would be up and gone in three miles down range before they even got that thing fired up because there's so mm -hmm. many computer systems that they had right. to, you know, get fired up and, and, and sequence and everything had to come online where, you know, there's none of that in the older birds. You just come out, you kick the tires, you make sure there's nothing leaking and you jump in and go, right? So uh, very, very convenient and, and just a, a, a horse, you know, just a workhorse aircraft. I was very honored to be able to work on those. I was an aviation electronicsman, so I had a lot of troubleshooting that I did. And it's what kind of spun me into, uh, I now own a computer business and, you know, uh, I have a little store and we sell and service and repair computers because troubleshooting is our life. And there's no better place to do that than in the computer industry. So, um, okay. So I'm not sure if I can help with this one, but uh, Cindy said, tell the audience about how call signs work. You want to fill in on that? Are you aviation enough to give us? No, a I'm not. Um, I could do the rest of this broadcast using um, the military alphabet, but. I got the nomenclature. Uh, Alpha, Bravo, Charlie, Delta, Echo, Foxtrot. Hotel, Zero. India. Hotel, India. Go ahead. You go. Well, I think I forget J. Uh, Juliet. Juliet, then Kilo. Kilo. Yep. Kilo. JKL is Lima. Yeah, and Mike, uh, November, Oscar, Oscar, Papa. Uh, <laughs> yeah, then, then I'm, then I'm, you know, if they throw them up, there's, there's this, there's this meme that goes around on Facebook where somebody will write out an entire post using the alpha, using the military alphabet, yes. and you're, and you're smart if you can read it. And right. I can usually figure it, I can pull it out, but I can get it pretty well. You know, the human brain's pretty amazing, Chris, right? Mm -hmm. 
Have you seen the ones where they like leave out every third letter and you oh, can yeah. still read it if your mm-hmm. you know brain is working pretty well? It's a good test if your brain is starting to shut mm-hmm. down. Um, oh, the call signs are the pilots. They all have their own call sign, right? So right. Uh, what was Maverick that. from the movie, Maverick mm-hmm. and Ice and all that. Mm-hmm. So I guess those are the call signs you're talking about, Cindy. Aviation call signs. How do pilots get their call signs? The origins of aviator call signs are varied. Most call signs play on or reference on variants of the aviator's first or surname. Uh, Hmm. Other inspirations for call signs may include personality traits, middle name, references to historical figures, or past exploits during the pilot's career. There you go, folks. You got your call sign information. Okay, so a Facebook user posted in here a few minutes ago. As established, Atlanta was the world's busiest airport in 2021, having processed more than 75.7 million passengers. But what does the rest of the top 10 look like? U.S. facilities dominate the rankings with Dallas, Fort Worth, Denver, Chicago, O'Hare, and Los Angeles International completing the top five as of October 9th, 2022. So there you go. Still Atlanta. And I've flown through all of those airports. (laughs) There's a piece of trivia for you, folks. All right. Well, I'll tell you what, we're coming up here. We're a little bit uh, past the uh, half part way point of the hour here. So if you're good, Chris, I'm going to go ahead and wrap this thing up. Um, Not a problem. So do you have anybody else you want to shout out uh, before we go, Chris? You know, I just say, you know, go to nationallycalendar.com, find, search for your birthday, find something fun, see what's going on out there. And, uh, you know, we have a 2023 calendar you can buy, both a wall calendar and one that sits on your desk. Um, Christmas is coming up. We've got some new ornaments. Um, we got some ugly Christmas sweater ornaments that just went on the, on the store. So, uh, you'll have a, a heyday with those. So ugly, ugly Christmas sweater days coming up in, I think it's December 9th. So cool, cool. cool. And also to our audience, if you have any questions for either one of us, feel free to pop those in the chat. We're going to hang around a little bit longer before we finish up. But, uh, if there's anything you want to know, uh, you know, within reason, <laughs> welcome <laughs> to put them in there and we'll see if we can't come up with an answer for you. Um, how about, uh, how do you, how are you going to practice gratitude this month, Chris? Have you started any yet or are you still kind of working it up? I mean, I've had some people that really, really drove me nuts, uh, this last week and I had to really work hard to be grateful. And I found something, I found Mm -hmm. something that I was grateful for that I wasn't them. So I was grateful, but, uh, what about you? How are you practicing it this month? Well, you know, today's a perfect day because today is my wife's birthday. Ah, So there's, there's gratitude of a, a plenty. Very and cool. um, she loves funfetti cake. Um, I'm not a fan, but that's how I express gratitude. I make her a funfetti cake every year. Very cool. Now, see, that's just that's just true love right there, brother. So, uh, a- uh, uh, Amy, I just totally Cindy. Why do I have Amy Lee all of a sudden popped in my head? Because she has Amy as the first name on here. Right. Cindy wants to shout out Amy, Alice, Marlo, Chris, and Chris. That's you, the second Chris for National Day calendar has helped her with her gifts and travel business because she can always Mm -hmm. send somebody something really cool or she i mean i get lots of really cool uh, messaging from cindy on all kinds of different days where she's just saying you know grateful for you today's this type of day or whatever Mm so uh i really appreciate that and cindy really appreciates that as well so folks i'll tell you what chris we're gonna go ahead anything more before we uh send you out i don't see that we got any uh We're good. I would add, we just, um, Bonnie's a new member of our staff. She is our social media guru. So shout out to Bonnie as well. All right. Well, there you go. Thank you very much, Bonnie, for handling that. And if you need any social media tips, I know a place where you can find out what day, uh, national day it is. So, you know, I have something to post. That's right. Look me up. I'll help you out there, Bonnie. Okay. Um, and, and, uh, uh, Cindy wanted us to say also that she wrote a book on how to use the national day calendar. That's how much of a badass she is. So, uh, all right, Chris, we're going to pop you out into the green room and go ahead and wrap this sucker up. Thank you so much for coming and hanging out with us today. I really appreciate it. Great getting to talk to you. Great time. No, you have an awesome rest of your day, sir. You too. All right. Okay. So thanks to everyone who watched today. Um, next Wednesday, we are going to be celebrating the Marine Corps birthday. And if you would, please share, share, like on Facebook, make sure people know what's going on and and uh, get the stuff going out there so that we can get more people to understand that this is the national month of gratitude. And we are really working hard to help people find something to be grateful for in their lives. Because guess what? No matter how bad you got it in America, you're still one of the one percenters. All right. So my name is Robin Stern. I'm going to get out of here. You guys have an awesome rest of your day and be grateful. Take care.